Hi guys, I'm LJ. And I'm Matthew. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Tech, Tech Base. Base. So hi guys, as you can see from the title, today we're gonna be building a custom water cooling loop from China. And the point of this was, well, to do it as cheap as we can. And we managed to do it under 40 bucks, so without further ado, here are the parts. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to have to put some thermal paste on our CPU and as you can see we already have the thermal paste prepared and then we're going to put on the CPU block and screw it in. Fun, thing, uh, fun fact about the CPU block is you can use it for both AMD and Intel because it has different kind of uh, holes for the screws as you can see. Uh, then you're going to drop a couple of screws into your motherboard and trying to get them out with a screwdriver and once you successfully get them out you're, you're gonna try to use them to just screw in the last of the parts from the CPU block usually the hand pressure is enough uh, so the next thing we did we got a couple of meters of a, this plastic tubing and we got a couple of uh, tube fittings for four dollars both of them because China. China. So when you fit them onto the plastic tubing, you then screw them in in the CPU block. Tight. So you prevent any chance of leaking because we do not want that. For the next part, we decided to go with a 240 millimeter um, <laughs> Uh, radiator for the water cooling uh, We kind of thought that the 120 millimeter Radiator is gonna be a bit small. So yeah, we overkilled it and of course it was from China. So it was cheap. So Why not? Uh, then we got a, a couple of fans which are also from China. China for like a dollar or two That's why we got so many So I don't think we're gonna be short on fans neither should be you should you be then we got a $2 pump, which was already used, so it has a little bit of water stone on it, but don't worry. And of course the tank for the water. We already put the holes through the cap of the tank, and let's put this all together. The only thing we do now is put some fans onto the radiator and of course if you don't want to have this mess when you put this into your computer case you're gonna fiddle around with the tubings where they're gonna go and everything. So now we're, that we're gonna be mounting uh, the fans to the radiator we don't really have enough screws for the fans well because we didn't get them when uh, ordering the fans so we're gonna use uh, hot glue which, well, we usually do.
I think we forgot to mention that our CPU is an FX 8350 from AMD and then we got an R9 290 just so it doesn't bother. Then you just connect the fans to the Molex connectors. And that's it. That's basically it. And now we're gonna test this. So now that we got the test bed set up, the first thing we gotta also do is put in some water. Because no water cooling with no water. Usually you should put in distilled water, but we're using normal water because we don't care about our tubes. So yeah, let's turn on the system. Okay, fans are spinning everything. And let's see the temperature test. So we're gonna be testing our CPU on IDA64 Extreme and see what the temps are. Keep in mind that the previous test that we did without a water loop, only on the normal fans, for the CPU cooling, it had like 70, 73, 75, um, degrees Celsius. So, I mean degrees Celsius. We're not gonna test. <laughs> We're not gonna test it on IDA64 because we have some problems. Because LJ has two screens. He has some problems with his computer recognizing the second screen and it just starts the IDA64 on that screen. And yeah, it's not here. No, not here. Okay, we are just gonna run some Cinebench tests and see what the temps are we have hardware monitor and the idle temps are 26, 25, 21, 20, 19, 80 okay around 25 okay so we're gonna test it on the Cinebench and in the meanwhile check the temps with the hardware monitor and at the moment the temperatures are 60 and they were even less before we started. Sixty-three degrees Celsius, and Cinebench is done. So, actually, big improvement. Big improvement from the. Nope fan cooling so basically it does perform better but keep in mind that this pump was already used for like half a year or like a year by LJ here and well he didn't really take good care of it <laughs> okay he did take good care of it but he didn't use distilled mm. water and that's why the four dollar pump is kind of acting out but when he had this pump uh, before in his own computer it ran around 50 degrees 51 52 53 which was way better okay so the water loop is finished and it works and the temperatures are actually pretty decreased the only thing i would recommend is buying a better pump maybe at your local store just for like ten dollars and it would perform way better than this one so yeah it's finished that's it yeah look at the awesomeness yeah so as you guys could see the water loop performed way better than let's this. say this. Actually when I bought this PC I got this fan and the CPU was overheating without any overclock. But yeah, it was overheating without no overclocks and now I we just have it. Said that. I know, I know, but now we have it overclocked in like what? Four four point six. Four point six gigahertz. And, and it performs way better. It's on 60 degrees while running the Cinebench as you could see and it was overclocked to 4.6. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys actually built something like that in your own computer. Maybe even comment us if you want to ask about something and maybe send us some pictures of your own water loops. You should buy the water cooling! Yeah. See you guys next time. China!